Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am DM Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, uh, today is a bit of a surprise video for myself. Um, you know, last thing on my radar was that uh, some new content for for Mifrog and, and in particular for uh, Mifrog the Coming, um, you know, has, has indeed uh, been released. So Mifrog the Coming is the uh is the post-apocalyptic uh supplement to mifrog the role-playing game so that is mythic fantasy role-playing game uh it, it was uh created by varg vickens and uh, you know this this particular one came out in 2020 so really not that long ago and the fantasy core book needed to play the coming uh, is currently on uh, on Amazon, ten bucks, and this uh, the coming supplement is uh, really five ninety nine, so basically six bucks. So for sixteen dollars, not only do you get a full, you know, you'll get a full fantasy role playing game, uh, but you'll also get a uh, a post apocalyptic setting booklet along with that, and. The one thing when when the coming was first released, which was probably around like 2016 or so, uh, it came out with uh, with the 2.7 edition or possibly even the 2.6 edition is now up to 4.4.0. Uh, um, and the one thing it was missing was uh, was vehicle stats and skills and and vehicle combat. Well, that has now been introduced by uh, Jeremy Bardis. So one of, one of the great things about writing for Mifrog, even though it's a much maligned game, um, the game system is actually very solid. And, um, you know, if, if you can separate the, uh, the author and some of his political views from the game that he actually created... Um, you know, if you're capable of doing that, then you're not going to pass up a, a pretty solid system, uh, and and that's the way I've always looked at it. You know, if I if I bothered to look at the author's politics and and even if they're not aligned with my own, um, you know, I would be passing up on a lot of uh, you know entertainment content out there that I otherwise uh, you know wouldn't. You know, wouldn't open myself up to. So I, I prefer to uh, try to separate as much as possible um, my entertainment and and my my content from politics and 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 such. So um, I I can certainly do that, and you know I recommend that you do if you're looking for interesting systems out there that you might not otherwise look at. So that all being said, let's start taking a look at uh, at the coming. So I'm just going to talk first about the, the new format. So the, the last couple of supplements that have come out for Mifrog and, and now the coming is that uh, it, it comes in the, the, the fuller size 8x11 instead of uh, the small pamphlet forms. I actually like this better because... Uh, it, it fits on the shelf better along with the rest of the books. It's now kind of uniform, um, you know, uniform size with the with the rule books and such. So, so that's that's one thing. I was I I always get surprised. I don't know why. I should stop getting surprised that they come in this format. But um, it's a much easier format to read as well. And uh, let's get right into it. Now, my view of this is, you know, going to be from the drop-down camera. Um, the one thing that uh, that Varg does not do with his products is he does not produce them in PDF. Uh, but he does allow for others to, um, you know, to, to utilize his work and to, and to write for his, you know, write uh, using his game system. And you can publish and earn money, which I've done as well. Uh, utilizing his system. So he's very open to other content creators actually uh, using his game system and uh, and making their own products. Uh, the other thing I want to bring out before I actually dig into the game is that uh, 
that there is a, a ever growing community on Facebook for Mifrog uh, fantasy. And, um, and that's where a lot of the new content is really coming from. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a fairly decent sized community or roughly 500 or so, uh, members. It grows almost weekly. Uh, I get, I get posts, uh, you know, requests to join and, um, you know, and once they do join, it's it's a fairly active community. There are games being run there, and uh, and as I said, there's there's contributors like uh, Jeremy Bardis who is actually writing content for the game and then making it available. So, let's get into the what has been added now. So I am going to go into. This drop down view here, so as you can see, and it's it's going to be slightly distorted. Um, I always have a hard time getting this to match up on the, you know, on the uh, screen, you know, better. So we have um, the new the new material begins on page fourteen with vehicles driving civilian vehicles, military and police vehicles, unpowered vehicles, artillery for military vehicles, vehicle add-ons. Vehicle condition, vehicle parts, fuel, driving speed, accidents, vehicle combat rules, random vehicle encounters. And then we go into, um, we go back into, there might be critical damage for vehicles. I'll check that when I get to it. But um, so basically from pages 14 through 34, so about 24 pages, let's say, or maybe slightly less. Uh, is going to be uh, is going to be just solely based on the addition of vehicle um, vehicles in the game and vehicle combat. So we're going to jump right to it. I will I will glance over this really quickly. Um, so it, it's been a while, but I will link my previous uh, introduction to the coming uh, on the channel along with the rest of my Mifrog content as well. Um, but uh, Mifrog is a is a post-apocalyptic uh, setting. Uh, the apocalypse that actually occurred, or the, the disaster that actually occurred, was kind of like the kitchen sink of all all disasters. I mean, there was biological, nuclear, um, geothermic, uh, zombies. Uh, you know. Um, mutations, uh, virtually everything, plus, uh, you know, uh, mega corporations and uh, corrupt governments and, uh, you know, corrupt religious groups and death cults and just everything under the sun was uh, included in the apocalypse that leads you to this, uh, this point here. So there was quite, quite a bit. Um, and, and and perhaps a little bit too much, at least for my taste. I would like, you know, choose one and go with that. Um, but still, pretty cool. It has um, it has all the things you would expect in a post-apocalyptic setting. So you have various skills for foraging, and you have radiation and radiation uh, sickness. You have mental health conditions that uh, you know that would manifest themselves. Um, you know, due to obviously living in a post-apocalyptic world, you'd, you'd imagine that there would be, you know, quite a bit of emotional stress and trauma. Uh, you have mental healing, you have the effects of losing your mental health, you have post-traumatic traumatic stress disorder, um, you have some more modern, now this is a modern setting again, so you're going to have uh, modern weaponry added to the fantasy weaponry that we had before and that certainly includes firearms and you know various types of ammunition and everything the one thing this system does really well is that it, it does have a nice mix of firearms and uh and then different types of ammunition even for those uh those firearms so that's uh you know that's something that's a reality there's also seems to be a mix of you know predominantly like european uh, European style weapons and and nomenclature and um and and then American as well. 
So you have a mix of both types, um, which again is, you know, just the nature of uh, utilizing what you know best. And uh, Varg being a European, you know, that's that's where he is going to have a lot of uh, his knowledge base from. So now we're going to get to vehicles. So I'm going to start here and, and try to do my best. I know it's going to be hard for you to follow along and read. Although oil and other fossil fuels are virtually extinct in the coming, that oil is left is scavenged to uh, what oil is left is scavenged to uh, fuel what vehicles were left behind from civilizations, vehicles that haven't been stripped of parts or other valuable materials such as copper are an indispensable tool to anyone wanting to survive. They can serve as a means of transportation, a shelter, or as a weapon. They come in all shapes and sizes, from uh, the modest motorcycles to the heavy armored military vehicle. A person wanting to survive might not be able to find the most suitable vehicle for their needs, but they must make use of whatever serviceable vehicle they can find. So there is uh, a driving skill, and um, and the effects of driving on uh, paved roads, on dirt roads, off-road. Attack using a vehicle has a modifier. Controlling a vehicle being attacked uh, is a modifier. It has a it has a difficulty rating of uh, a sixteen. You know, so it's hard to control a vehicle while it's being attacked. Uh, jumping an obstacle and landing safety uh, safely. Um, has a, let's read this here, it has a difficulty level equal to the obstacle length in feet divided by four minus the speed modifier and weight mod, see vehicle combat rules. So um, yeah, this is kind of a throwback to some of your older game systems like Rollmaster. Uh, there is a bit of crunch to Mifrog, but for many of us, um, you know, doing some doing some math isn't a big deal. Um, you have your speed modifiers. So if you're driving very slowly between five and ten miles per hour, it is uh, a plus two. Driving slow, fifteen to twenty five miles per hour is a plus one. Driving a moderate speed of thirty to forty five is a plus zero. Driving fast, fifty to seventy, is a minus one to your skill modifiers. Um, Driving very fast, 75 to 85 is a minus 2, and driving extremely fast, 90 plus, is a minus 3. <coughs> Environmental modifiers for driving, you have driving on a paved road, a dirt road it gives you a minus 1, off-road minus 2, driving on a, a winding road, sorry, I almost said winding, a winding road is a minus 2, driving through mud, a minus 3. Fording through a flooded area, minus three. Fording through running water, a minus four. All right, so an interesting uh, thing that he would include that, you know, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of detail here so far. Optional rule, manual, and automatic transmissions. So very, very interesting here. So uh, Jeremy goes into... Um, Different modifiers, whether you're driving standard or automatic. So that's pretty cool. Uh, weather conditions affect your driving ability. So now we're going to go to um, civilian vehicles. So we have motorcycles, we have sport bikes, we have subcompact cars, and we have sedans. So let's take a look at some of these stats here. So your typical motorcycle is going to be 830 pounds. It's a minus two for uh, size uh, size modifications. Towing capacity has none. Fuel tank in liters is 231 liters. Uh, fuel type is either petrol or gasoline. Driver plus passenger is a one plus one. Capacity has NA, uh, NA that means cargo capacity. Maximum speed 100 miles per hour. Um, this is obviously not the crotch rocket uh, um, Kawasaki's or ninjas or, or you know, whatever. Um, real value, 250. I don't know what that 250 is in. 
um, probably whatever modern currency. It's been a long, long time since I played uh, uh, The Coming for Mifrog. Armor Protection 0. Defensive value is a plus 14 against melee and just a plus, I'm sorry, a plus 14 against, uh, against missile and a plus 5 versus melee. Possible add-ons, SB. I'll get to SB later on uh, and possible add-ons. So now we'll go to a, a, a typical car, a compact sedan, let's say. So 3,000 pounds. 1,500 pounds of uh, towing capacity, 451 liters of gasoline, driver plus passengers, one plus four, capacity, four barrels, uh, cargo, uh, maximum speed, 100, acceleration, three rounds. Uh, I didn't see the acceleration on, oh, just two rounds for the motorcycle. Uh, real value, 700. Ease of driving is a plus one. Fuel consumption, 71 per uh, 71 liters per 100 kilometers. Action zero. Defensive value plus, uh, plus 11. Uh, defensive value versus melee, plus five. And possible add-ons, ST, TC, PB, LL, LS, CB, TH, and SL. I will get to that a little bit later. Um, we have a full-size sedan, a muscle car, sports car, pickup truck light, pickup truck normal, pickup truck heavy, sport utility vehicles. We have uh, a light and a normal. We have vans, box trucks, semi-trucks without a trailer, a camper van. Class C recreational vehicle, Class A recreational vehicle. These are very large vehicles with like 19,000 pounds, 33,000 pounds. A shuttle bus, a bus. We have a police patrol car, military utility vehicle, light. Military utility vehicle, normal. Military utility vehicle, armored. So it's probably like a Hummer. It can have, yeah, mounted machine guns, uh, heavy machine guns, a grenade launcher, or wire-guided missile. Uh, that's actually for all of these here, plus a slew of modifiers as well. Uh, armored personnel carriers, main battle tanks, armored personnel carriers, uh, vehicle military. Oh, so there was SWAT, and then there was military. Super tanks. Heavy tank, medium tank, light tank, tank destroyer, self-propelled artillery, infantry fighting vehicles, 6x6 heavy trucks, and then we have unpowered vehicles such as trailers, flatbeds, small covered trailers, medium covered trailers, and so on. So a variety of uh, unpowered military vehicles. We have um, towed howitzers and such. Oh. <coughs> We have various types of artillery for, um, you know, four vehicles, for military vehicles going from 37 to 57 millimeter uh, all the way up to 152 to 155 millimeter. We have common gear for uh, vehicles, which I really like actually. So common gear in a police patrol car, you'll find one semi-automatic rifle, normal with two magazines. One pump action shotgun, two Kevlar vests, one first aid kit, one flashlight, ammunition of 9mm, 45 APC, 2.23, and 12 gauge uh, ammunition. So, um, pretty cool that they, he has uh, included uh, typical equipment you would find in these vehicles. Then we have vehicle add ons, and I was talking about that earlier with the abbreviations. So you have snow tires, that's ST. You have tire chains. You have spotlights. You have push bumpers. You have small light bar, um, which affects your perception. Interesting. Oh, light bar on the, on the top of the vehicle. Okay. Uh, large light bar. That's like the, the lights that you see either on the bottom of the, um, 
on the bottom of the bumper, like fog lights or on top, uh, like you see on Jeeps a lot of times. A trail hitch, electric winch, saddlebags for motorcycle, obviously, and a CB radio, all right, for your dispatch vehicles. Vehicle condition. So there's rules here for vehicle conditions and their impact on your uh, difficulty ratings for uh, for driving. So if it's a terrible condition, then you need an 8 in order to drive it. Um, you need to roll an 8 on 3D6 in order to effectively drive it. There are consequences for failure. Condition deterioration and improvement over time. And improvements, so replacement parts, uh, you know, it, you have a part condition here as part of the upgrades. And then we go into the various, um, you know, D12, and you're doing a uh, minor failures, major failures using a D12. And then we go into vehicle parts and full breakdown, you know, uh, or... A pretty extensive breakdown. I wouldn't quite say a full breakdown, but a pretty extensive breakdown here. So you have brake pads, you have fuel lines, you have brake lines, uh, silence or mufflers, uh, rotors. Uh, we'll just jump down here. You have spark plugs, you know, two ounces. Um, to install or repair is a DD10. Uh, so that's a, you know, that's the roll that you have to make on 3D6. And uh, real value, about 10 um, 10 in the currency that they're utilizing, uh, motor oil, saddlebags, air conditioner, compressors, radiators, windshield wipers. Uh, so they, you know, have a, a full listing here. So you have driving speed, accidents, damage to players from accidents. Um, so if you have a crash and you're driving fast, uh, 2D6 damage. Uh, which a considerable amount of damage. Um, you know, the average the average person had like a about eight hit points, if I recall, and so two um, d six is a significant amount of damage. Um, vehicle damage modifier. Uh, so you would add based on the speed how much how many points added on to the the basic roll. Defensive value modifier. Only applies when attacking the target broadside. Okay, uh, so that's when the defensive value comes into play. Damage to the vehicle is a D6. It could be rendered on a 5 to 6 uh, to be undrivable. And beneath that, either have no, no damage at all on the 1 to 2 or have damage that inhibits some of its function. Vehicle combat rules. And so there's a base modifier that you apply to your attack dies uh, when you're using a vehicle as a uh, as a as either a weapon or a um, the base of a weapon system. Damage caused by being struck by a vehicle. There's a system for cover, using vehicles as cover. And random vehicle encounters on a D20, if you roll less than or equal to a 10, you found a vehicle on an 11 or greater, you haven't found a vehicle. Um, then you would roll for vehicle type based on, so most on the average between 3 and 15 on a D20, you'll find the civilian vehicle. Transmission type, um, standard is a 1 to 15, and an automatic is a 16 to 20. That's definitely got to be a, a European standard because it's the exact opposite. Um, you know, probably in the States, you'd have a hard time finding vehicles. Um, this is the optional rule. I would certainly swap those two percentages uh, easily, uh, swap those two uh, backwards. But anyway, um, the condition that the vehicle was found in, 
anywhere from inoperable to excellent condition. And then unpowered vehicles like trailers and that kind of stuff and, and so on. So pretty interesting stuff. I mean, a lot of detail here. Civilian vehicles, so what, what kind did you find when you do come up with a civilian vehicle? And um, if you did roll, if you were lucky enough to roll a military police vehicle, then what, what kind would fall under here? One to six is a military uh, a police patrol car. And then the rest just, uh, you know, on a one on a one in ten, uh, 20 chance for virtually everything else. So. Healing and critical damage. All right. So this goes back to the original rules. So it goes uh, back to. Um, to the regular non vehicle. Portions of the game rules. Right, let's see if there's anything else new. Nope, that's pretty much it. So, so there you have a, a fully, let's shift views here. So there you have it. I mean, for, for $6, you're adding such an incredible element of um, um, content to your post-apocalyptic uh, you know, game system that you're using and, and setting that you're using that it's, it's certainly worth, uh, getting a hold of. And, um, you know, it should have been included all along, but, uh, but now that we have it here, it's certainly something that you can add to the, uh, you know, to your current campaign, uh, very easily. Uh, looks like the rules are, you know, fairly simple, uh, especially if you're used to the Mifrog rule system. And then, um, the various options and everything that you have on there, the way that you can really integrate this and, and become part of the, the major part of your uh, campaign uh, is certainly there. The, the building blocks for that are certainly there. I know when I played uh, the MMO Fallen Earth, uh, it was a multiplayer, uh, mo massively multiplayer online game, uh, post-apocalyptic setting. And... Uh, Many of us, uh, there, there were many active communities on the server. And uh, the server, if you're not familiar with it, uh, was uh, you, can, you can voluntarily flag yourself for PvP and, um, you know, at any time. And then there were a couple zones where you automatically go into PvP once you entered those zones. But for the most part, um, I was in groups that would voluntarily flag at all times so anytime you were and there, there were a lot of motorcycle uh clubs and car clubs and such and and the keys to getting into those various clubs was that um you had to have the skills to build your own bike that was the initial thing you had to have the the mechanical and the scavenging skills and everything to bring everything together and to build your first uh, motorcycle. And that was your initiation to get in to a club. And then once you were driving in any or riding in any group larger than two. So once you were in a group of three, you had to, you had to be flagged for combat. Um, so for PVP combat and uh, we had one, one neutral city that we would all um, travel to that was Flagsta uh, Flagstaff, Arizona. And uh, it just, the, the, the vehicle building became such a core aspect of the role playing at the, uh, you know, on that server that, um, you know, I, I don't think the game would have been anywhere as close to as interesting uh, without that component. Now that that component is added to the coming here, you know, again, I think that the people playing this are going to find that it is a, uh, a huge benefit, uh, to your campaigns to have included this. Um, you know, so great work, uh, Jeremy Bartis, uh, thanks to Varg for, you know, allowing, the community to keep on producing things for his game system and, and to get it out there. And, and again, you really can't beat some of the pricing at, you know, 
ten dollars for a core rule book that is you know over 200 pages long and uh you know and then six dollars for a supplement that really adds a whole new component to uh the role-playing system and you know without that uh you know, without that openness and support from a community, you know, you wouldn't have a game like this that is still going along and uh, people are still contributing to it, still playing it. And uh, it's something that I've set aside for quite a while. And, you know, this kind of thing is really something that could bring me back into it, uh, at least from time to time, uh, while I delve into all of my other games as well. So, as always, thanks for joining. Um, you know, enjoy the rest of your week. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave those in the comments section. And um, you know, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And um, you know, as always, I look forward to seeing you on the gaming screen sometime soon. Thanks for joining, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Take care.